Okay then, experience is kick-started, and we're off. The epoch is moving. If we return to the possibility that the creational matrix is actually designed to deteriorate, that it can only do so if that which is created and agreed to, the cause is of a nature that the effect is of a deteriorating epoch nature overall, then you need the individuals in creation to perform and bring about this demise, if you will. In order for the epochs to deteriorate then, you need individuals who will bring about the restriction, the control, the types who will get the masses to agree, and thus we have all our epochs, and everybody has all their far vaster array of experience. What makes an individual into a tyrant? How would we ensure such characters, such created consciousnesses were formed? For if they were not, then creation would be rather static, epoch speaking, and our experiences lessened, as it stalled perhaps at the Golden Epoch. This would suggest that the epochs can't really get rolling until we hit the point in time where individuals are granted free will to create, to agree, to bring forth the restrictive causes and get agreement to their ideas, to get the epochs doing their deteriorating cycle. It's curious where such attitudes come from, if this model suggests that epochs do not deteriorate until free will kicks in, then the point that the epoch deteriorated from gold to silver is still rather early on in the experience reference gathering stages of the individuals in the simulator. Evidently it is through boredom or a complete saturation of experience that leads individuals to possibly become tyrants and dictators, to rule others and have and claim everything to lessen their boredoms. But would boredom have kicked in quite so early, at such an early stage in the epoch cycles, the transition from gold to silver? Perhaps because there is still plenty of experience for all to be had once free will is granted, that individuals do not become bored for eons, there is no need at this time for control and restriction. Perhaps then this suggests the golden epoch is far longer in duration than the others, until everyone gets bored, and restriction, and suppression, and consequently deteriorating experience occurs, and the transition to the silver epoch is made. But perhaps another possibility, as it is hard to imagine why individuals would seek to suppress and control in a golden epoch of abundance, 
and why agreement to it would even begin, at least in its early stages of agreement. Perhaps the individuals had these attitudes prior to their acquisition of a body type that came with free will. Perhaps these attitudes that would become the free will utilizing controllers were forged in their prior animal forms somehow. And this would ensure that individuals were almost primed to be the controllers that would bring forth all the suppression that results in the epoch transitions, and affording everyone far more experience. Let's go back to the beginning. Individuals first entering the golden epoch, they are in awareness states of being, they have no free will to create, to forge experience, and so are given a little karmic baggage to get things experientially rolling. I just wonder, is this little karmic burden perhaps the seed that will grow into the controllers later on? Could this karma, this experience, be designed or catered in such a way that the individual develops the sort of attitudes you might expect from a controller. For everything has been wiped clean, a clean causal reference slate, no consciousness created at this moment, no personality or attitude just awareness and being. And so, our little single-celled creature is burdened with experience generating karma of the type that causes a certain attitude to lodge. Some sense of something in its consciousness that is an echo of anger, bitterness, maybe hatred, something that maybe all the others around it do not have. Perhaps their experiences, their given karma, is different to afford different experiences and rudimentary attitudes, for it makes no sense to have all the creatures as controllers to be, or even most of them. Perhaps a handful out of the whole swamp will do. Because of the particulars of these attitudes, these little karmic experience-inducing gifts, our individuals take very different paths. Based on these little attitudes, these attitudes best suited for controllers that they will harbour in their consciousnesses. What sort of species do you think they will assume? I would say the predatory ones, the snakes, the alligators, maybe a lion or a tiger, if we have the self-decided sense of what are considered higher traits thrown in, lions are associated with bravery after all, but are still predators. With full-blown controller types, it's very easy to imagine their animal body forms being very reptilian, as this seems to be the body types associated with individuals of a controlling, restricting of others' nature. And the other beings? 
with their little karmic experience induced attitudes being of a non-controller variety, well these are the little fluffy bunnies, the rabbits and such overwhelmingly, and indeed they are the prey of the controllers to be in the future. The prey to the alligators and snakes as they are currently. So then, all the individuals take their assumed positions and animal forms, stemming from this initial attitude, until they hit the free will mark. By now, the initial attitude which got them this far, and there is no reason that, s that some may, for whatever reason, fluctuate between the two extremes of a predator and prey species. The attitudes have them assuming body forms in keeping with their created consciousness. The fluffy bunnies and elephants become perhaps humans and Pleiadians, the crocodiles and the snakes become reptilians. Now we're in business, we have our villains, we have the good guys, or the sheep, we have those that prey on others. Now in forms where, yes, they still will eat other species, but are also going to start to control the other species technologically. And we have those that fall victim to the predators. They have spent many lives being eaten by the crocodiles. Now they have the attitudes and consciousness most likely to obey, to agree, to be subjugated. Or, as in the human race's case, be created and subjugated and controlled from their very first moments. Either way, we can see that the epochs are moving along now, and we swiftly move through the silver, to the bronze, to the iron. I suggest each epoch shorter than the last, in duration, as things tend to escalate with this model of experience forged through cause and effect restriction. And here we are, at the Iron Epoch. The simulator is about to implode. We have the bad guys, the reptilians, the source of all the deterioration, and the good guys, the ones suppressed and agreeing with the distorted ideas of restriction, and all of this has gotten us to this point. It would be very easy to point to the reptilians and proclaim them bad, the cause of all, and pat the suppressed humans and other restricted species on the back, as the poor victims of unconscious, literalized restriction. But wait! The ears shines on all with indifference. It does not judge or chastise any individual, regardless of what they have chosen and decided. It stands with complete indifference and detachment, and if we do the same, we can view this situation with the same objectivity. The simulator is for experience purposes, and the nature of the experience 
isn't important, be it good or bad. It is for our references and comparisons, and any experience is just as valid and viable as any other, and if it is necessary, or perhaps favourable, for individuals to experience all four epochs, which seems to be the case, then without the so-called bad guys, the reptilians doing their bad things, we would have no epoch cycles, and thus all our experiences less varied, and so we are less likely to have amassed enough references for our comparisons to recognise the ease. Thank you.